Make it special, make it Maloney. This segment of the Port Jeff Pulse is sponsored by Houndstown in Port Jefferson, home to the happiest dogs on earth. Good morning, Mr. Gito. Good morning, how are you? You are a man that I really wanted to get on the show. You know, I really uh, wanted to because you've had such a recent impact with the village of Port Jefferson. And I know you, you, you grew up here, right? I grew up in Port Jefferson, yes. So your family's from here. Did you go to Port Jeff High School? I went to Port Jeff till 8th grade. I ended up at the Stony Brook School. Okay. Not too far from here, yeah. uh, but I had a great experience at Port Jefferson, great school district. I just want the little change, so that's all that happened there. So actually, let's start with that. Do you have a lot of experience on the water because you lived in Port Jeff? Did you, do you, what, what's your thing to do before, say, 25 years old? What did you do? In Port Jefferson? Yeah, uh, yeah I loved being on the beach, playing all sports. I was really into tennis at the country club. Yep. I was competitive there. Uh, I was a big swimmer. So those, those are my main interests. Yep. Uh, back growing up, like you said, before 25. Then I found out we have a mutual uh, contact. Uh, he's my cousin. He's a, he's a great guy. I know you'll agree with me. Anthony Montani, Anthony Montani Landscaping. Uh, that was so funny, too, how we made that connection, too. Very small world. Uh, got to meet Anthony a few years back now and did some work in my home, and now we brought him in on the commercial side of things. Yep. And you know, like you said, great guy and uh, great work, work ethic, and the quality is, is better than not. It's great. It's a great, great guy to know. Um, you are a member of the Port Jefferson Chamber, and I believe you're a director. Correct. I'm also on uh, board directors for the Business Improvement District as well. Excellent. So describe what you see as a 2017 Port Jeff and what your current project is now. So Port Jefferson, obviously, it's going through quite a revitalization, especially uptown. Uh, that's our most recent project. Uh, I guess let me talk about that sure. a little bit. Uh, well received. Thank you very and, much. And much needed. So we're excited. We're, we're a little nervous too, which is why we had built it in two phases. The total project was 74 units. Um, each property, each building has its own separate garage level, fitness center. There's a common courtyard, a screening room, has all the amenities that people are looking for uh, these days. And really, it's a, it's a luxury apartment complex, really nice quality. Uh, the area, obviously, is... Mm -hmm. hopefully going to revitalize Changing, and this is hopefully yep. a jump start to that revitalization uh, really appealed to the residency program uh, and to grad students and professors affiliated with the university as well as uh, support staff and residency program at Mather and then some of the staff at St. Charles as well uh, there's desperate need for desperate. luxury housing uh, in this area and no one minded that you know the area isn't downtown Port Jefferson just yet uh, we're hoping it gets to that point. We were, if we knew it was going to be as successful as it has You're been, right. we would have built the whole thing in you know one single phase. But we just opened a second phase. Both phases were pre-leased, right and yep. it's been fantastic. Could, could a project like that, or better question would be, could could the demand that you're seeing or have seen, or you're seeing currently, could that have happened 20 years ago? What changed in the marketplace that allowed a pro, uh, project like this to be built? I mean, the, it's a bit the big thing on Long Island right now is these transit-oriented transit-oriented developments, which this would fall under. Mm -hmm. uh, Multifamily near, you know, trains. Obviously, the bus line is there as well, and then we have the ferry uh, in the lower port. Right, but um, we have, we had that happening 20 years ago. What is it? Is it more because of the aspect of traveling? West, east, just more traveling, uh, you know, working at home. There's there's other things that change, right? Also affordability, taxes. Well, that that's just it yeah. right there. Homes are, have gotten very expensive to purchase. The mortgages, the taxes, the insurance, all costs have gone up. Uh, and like I said, the people that we're appealing to, a lot of them are in the area for three or four years, and then either they're leaving, you know, mm -hmm. just moving on with their profession, or many of them, which has been exciting to see, are establishing families and then are able to afford and move into a home, and a lot of them have done that locally, which is great. You want to see these people stay in the community. Uh, they all love the community. Uh, back to your question about you know how Port Jefferson is evolving has to do. I think a lot of that has to do with the retail industry right now, uh, with online retailers, chain, you know, taking big boxes uh, out of yes. you know 
changing the whole scope and the whole, the whole landscape. landscape. Of, exactly. Yes. Everything has changed. So people really want more of an experience. So a downtown area and hopefully uptown Port Jefferson, people want the experience. You can walk along the water, have a bite to eat, and then shop in some of the smaller boutiques. So stores. true. So hopefully that trend continues and Port Jefferson can feed off you know, that new trend and where things are starting to move towards. Uh, may I ask, what is the market rate for, if, by the way, is it one, two, and three bedrooms? What, it's what's a, a couple studios, but for the most part, they're one and two bedroom, predominantly one bedroom units. Uh, a one bedroom range is anywhere from 1850 up to 2300 per month plus okay. utilities. And the two bedrooms range uh, 2400 to say 2700 per month plus utilities. Yeah, so I, that's market rate for sure. That's that's to me. It's that's not it's not cheap, but you know when you take into account you're not paying maintenance fees, insurance, or taxes. Well, here's the thing. It it may not be cheap, but but for Long Island it's very normal because I, you know you and I both know people are paying 1200 for basement apartments. Illegal, by the way. Correct. So when you take that into effect, and you're a professional. I mean, look, look let's these. You should be working, right? If you're working, you're going to consider a place like this. I've said this on the show before. You know, you know what it costs to maintain a home. It costs that a month to maintain a home. Correct. So, you know, I've seen some commenting, for example, on this new project down here, which probably has a market rate of a little more. But then again, you are harbor front. Absolutely. I just wish people would look at the entire picture of it. You know, luxury living, waterfront uniqueness, stellar brand new, beautiful, on both of your projects. Um, uh, this I'm referring project, to this yeah, project Yeah, the Tritex, tri you know, they always do a fantastic job with any of the jobs yeah, that they've you. taken on. Oh, thank you. Um, definitely commend them, and I, like you said, I think people need to give it a chance, let their project be completed, and I think they're going to be wowed by the final result there. And Absolutely. It, it's adding people down here, it's adding money to the tax base, which this village will need, especially the school district. Um, I, I think it's a win-win. And going back to that, you know, a lot of these types of apartment complexes, we also have the, the Barnum House where CVS is. Just going to mention that. Um, so, so that building and now comparing with the hills as well. And I assume uh, the shipyard will have a similar situation where there's not a lot of children because it's, you know, it's not the type of environment that where people are living out in Long Island, they are raising several children, you know, maybe one or two children, uh, younger ages, it works out very well. But mm -hmm. as they get older, people are moving towards more of a townhouse or a home setting. Uh, so that being said, the tax base is increasing, but you're not adding that many children to the district. Absolutely. So I think it's a win-win. It is a win-win. I'm all for it personally. And uh, I think most, most people can see that the complexion of Upper Port uh, you really have jump started, so uh, I think you have a lot to be uh, proud of. I no, really, we, I really, we are. We're, really we're excited, and you know, since we, we live and work in the community, our office is based in downtown Port You're Jefferson. Committed. Yeah. We're committed. We're not here just to make money off a project. Obviously, you know that is part Obviously, of it. Yeah. Um, but we really want to see the area be beautified, and, and it's changing. It will change. It's coming. I know we're specifically looking at other projects up there, as well as other local developers and. I think if everyone does what they're hoping they can do, uh, you're going to see quite a transformation up there within five years. I was going to ask you, I was going to say five to seven years probably, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You'd love uh, to see five years. Well, unfortunately, the approval process you know, is it's not, what it is. It is yeah, you're, you're looking two to three years probably for a lot of these approvals to take place. Right. And then once you get the building constructed, you're right, five to seven years is about right where you should see a total transformation up there. Any other projects you want to tell the listeners about or any, anything you want to reflect on? going forward, you know, from a company that you can talk about, actually? Uh, or is it basically centered around Port Jeff? Do you ever do anything outside of Port Absolutely, Jeff? Absolutely, yeah. Most of our, pro you know, we have shopping centers, mm -hmm. office buildings, and multifamily throughout Long Island and in the city, the boroughs. Uh, we also manage properties, third-party management. Um, so our, our we, we're pretty diversified in terms of we don't really get into hospitality or industrial, but we have some of those big box store shopping centers. Uh, we have office complexes where, you know, those markets are always constantly changing. So our time is spread throughout most of the island, uh, anywhere from Elmont to Mattituck and Riverhead. Uh, and then we're in Manhattan and Brooklyn as I well. Didn't so, Glad so I so we are all over. Your dad started the business? He did start the business. Can you tell me a little bit about that history? What year sure. that was? Do you have brothers in the business? I, I have two brothers. They're, okay. they're not working with us. Yep. They're sort of in the business, yep. but they're not working with us directly right. at this point. Um, but he started in the 80s, he was in the supermarket business, built over 140 supermarkets, uh, joined up with a couple gentlemen back in the 80s, and they went Excellent. into developing a couple shopping centers and office buildings, and then that 
grew into where we are today. Is your dad like completely understanding just, for example, how much power an Amazon.com has in terms of how fast things have changed in the last 10 years? Is he, did he see that coming? Does he understand that really changes the complexion of our society? From Absol a retail point of view? No, absolutely. And he's, you know, he's leaning on myself You're and some right, of the younger right. people in my office to kind of give him more insight of where that's heading. Um, but we do have, like I said, some of these big box tenants. And the negotiating power and the amount of those tenants that are available to fill large spaces, uh, there are a lot of, quite a few yep. uh, fewer to choose from these days. Uh, they kind of have the power in their hands. So he's very well aware of it because we're negotiating and dealing with them on a very regular basis. Uh, where it's all going to lead, who, who knows? You know, are these malls and shopping centers going to become it's more of these lifestyle it? entertainment you right. know, hubs? Will they add apartments to it? You know, the market will change. It will survive. Uh, it's just a matter of what's going to happen right. with everything that you see today. And, and it's it, great that you're able to draw on his experience because some things actually don't change in the building business, and you can draw on his experience from that perspective. Absolutely. Well, so. What I've learned from him is you know, he's conservative. Uh, so, you know, we take our time right. analyzing a potential project or development. Uh, so I, I've learned from him, take our jump at things as quickly as sometimes right. I'd like to. That's right. kind of my generation is, you know, with, with emails and everything, you just want to jump at everything as sure. quickly as possible. So that's one thing I, I could take from him. Take my time, analyze right. a particular deal or situation. And we have a conservative approach, which has been It's a balanced approach us. now because of that. Absolutely. So the second phase, what percentage of that is rented? Everything was 100% pre-leased before we Incredible. opened it. Incredible. Yeah, we have large waiting lists. So, you know, with the wow. shipyard being built and these other developments, uh, there's quite a bit for everybody. Right. And I, I think the market's going to continue to be strong. What Port Jefferson has, uh, they have a sewer district which makes these multifamily projects viable. Otherwise, you wouldn't None be able to build happened. here. And that's why local, the other local communities are unfortunately <laughs> not able to. Hey, this guy got it right. This ship, <laughs> <laughs> this driver got it right. What are ship drivers called? Captains. I, this captain got it right. He did the three <laughs> departing. He did a that's good funny. job. That's funny. But no, Sorry but that. that but that's what makes Port Jeff special. Yes. We, we have, I mean, there are a number of things that Like Rocky Point doesn't have that. They don't have sewers, so you can't put build a 100 unit complex right. without building your own sewage treatment right, uh, right, right. sanitation system, which gets right. a little bit more expensive sure, sure. and involved. So it's special here in our proximity to Stony Brook University. The university keeps expanding uh, and it's great. It's helped, you know, the services that have to be provided, the people that work, live um, and service and go to school there. Uh, it's helping with the apartment community, the rental community. Good stuff. Keep doing what you're doing. No, we're trying. Thank you're you. You're really a great quality organization, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate it. Thanks you know, for thank the opportunity. You. So folks that want to uh, understand uh, your projects in the future, what website should they go to? Uh, Thegitogroup.com. There it is. G-I-T-T-O group.com. Thanks again, Rob. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.